oxygen, and 1% other stuff. That's enough about the Earth. Let's move on to the other thing that hangs around with us, Luna, the moon. Part 7, the moon. Section A, origin of the moon. Where did the moon come from? The best guess right now is that soon after the Earth was formed, when it was still liquidy, something really big pounded into the Earth and knocked a big piece of the mantle into space. The big gloopy chunk solidified and became the moon. Scientists call this theory the Great Impact Hypothesis. We'd also like to share one of our favorite theories for the origin of the moon. The moon is actually a giant research station that was erected by an alien civilization about 10,000 years ago. From the moon, the aliens have a convenient base for studying the development of our civilization and species. Section B, Surface Features of the Moon. Two landscapes dominate the surface of the moon, the Maria and the Highlands. The Maria are plains covered with dry lava. It's been that way for at least three billion years. There are no active volcanoes on the moon anymore. The moon is geologically dead. The highlands are the older parts of the moon. We know this because the highlands have more craters. How does that work? Well, we know that craters on planets and moons are made by collisions with debris flying around the solar system, and that these collisions have been going on since the solar system was formed. This means areas of the moon with more craters are older, right? They've had more time to get cratered. Where did the crater-making debris come from? In space, there is some random junk that just flies around, like rocks. We call the junk meteoroids. There are also comets zooming around and a good deal of dust. When these rocks hit the Earth or Moon, they can be moving really fast, up to 30,000 miles an hour. Rocks moving that fast can cause a lot of damage. So when they hit the Moon, boom, crater is formed. The surface of the moon is covered with a powdery soil called regolith. There are two reasons why the moon is powdery. The first reason is that the moon is constantly bombarded by lots of small stuff from space. The earth is too, but when things hit the earth, friction with the atmosphere causes them to burn up and go away. The moon doesn't have an atmosphere, so all of the meteoroids and things that head toward it don't get burned up before hitting the surface. That means an awful lot of things hit the moon that wouldn't hit the earth. Either way, all of this pounding makes for a lot of powdery debris. The other reason the moon is powdery is a phenomenon called thermal shocks. We all know that things expand when they're hot and shrink when they're cold, right? That's why they make sidewalks with cracks already in it. Because the moon doesn't come with cracks already in it, well, I mean, because the moon doesn't have an atmosphere, there's no insulation to smooth out the daily changes in temperature. The moon goes from really hot to really cold very quickly. The quick change in temperature causes the rocks of the moon to expand and contract very quickly, which puts a lot of stress on the lunar rocks. The stress makes the rocks break apart. They literally crumble into dust. So scratch this on your head. The surface of the moon is powdery because of bombardment by space stuff and thermal shocks. The powder is called regolith. Oh yeah, by the way, the lack of atmosphere on the moon also means it has no weather. No wind, no rain, no nothing. So, as well as being geologically dead, the moon is also meteorologically dead. Section C. Phases and Rotation of the Moon. Pink Floyd called their album The Dark Side of the Moon. Unfortunately, astronomically speaking, there is no dark side of the moon. There is, however, a dark side of the force. Instead of a dark side, the moon has a far side. This is because of the force of the Earth's gravity. Long ago, the gravity of the Earth distorted the moon, making it lopsided. The Earth's gravity continues to pull on the bulge, making that side always point toward the Earth. And so, the same side of the moon is always facing the Earth. So when we look at the moon, we're always seeing the same side. The moon takes about 27 and one-third days to go around the Earth, but the moon goes through its lunar phases in 29 and a half days. The reason for this is a bit complicated. For now, just remember that the moon's cycle of phases lasts 29 and a half days. It'll come in handy later on. If you're still kind of shady on how that works, check this out. This guy's the Earth, and this soda can is the moon. His arm is the force of gravity. You, my viewing friends, are the sun. 
As the moon goes around him, it makes one rotation on its axis, and you get to see every part of it once. Make more sense now? The same side of the moon is always facing the Earth, but every part of the moon faces the sun at one point or another during that 29-day cycle. That's why we can't see the moon sometimes. We see the moon when the side of the moon that's facing us has sunlight shining on it. If the far side of the moon, the part we never see, is facing the sun, our side is in shadow, and we can't see it. How much of the moon we see is determined by the angle between the Earth, the moon, and the sun. If the moon is between us and the sun, for example, we don't see the moon at all, because the part of the moon that is lit by the sun is facing away from us. Actually, if we really tried, we could see the moon, because enough sunlight reflects off of the Earth to light up part of the moon that's in shadow. But as far as we're concerned, you can't see it. If the Earth is between the sun and the moon, we see a full moon, because the whole side that's facing us is lit up by the sun. Doesn't the Earth get in the way of the sunlight? Sometimes, but not often. The moon orbits the Earth at an angle, so the Earth doesn't get in the way much. A phase of the moon is what the moon looks like to us during a certain period of time. It's how much and which side is lit up. So now we're going to show you all the phases of the moon in order, from new moon, when we can't see it, all the way through full moon, and back to new moon again. One cycle through all the phases is the 29 and a half day lunar cycle. Each phase lasts about four days. New moon. You need a new moon in this phase, because you ain't got one. Waxing crescent. If you see more of the moon on the side facing west, it's waxing. You can remember what a crescent moon looks like because it looks like a crescent roll. First quarter. Here's how you remember this one. A quarter is a half. Sounds stupid, but it works. A quarter is a half. This is called the first quarter because the moon is one quarter of the way through its cycle. Waxing gibbous. Gibbous is a funny word, and that makes sense because this is the phase when the moon is the most funny looking. Full. This one is... Well, this one's pretty obvious. Now for the waning stages. You see more of the moon on the side facing east. Waning gibbous. Funny moon, funny name. Third quarter. A quarter is a half. Since it's the east half of the moon, it's the third quarter. Doesn't make any sense to me either, but that's how it works. Waning crescent. Mmm. Moon crescent roll on the left side. New. Let's run through those once more. New. Waxing crescent, first quarter, waxing gibbous, full, waning gibbous, third quarter, waning crescent, new. Got that? Oh, yeah, baby. The moon doesn't just spin around the Earth and show us its pretty phases. It has an effect on what happens here on Earth. Section D. Tides. The moon orbits the Earth because of the Earth's gravitational pull. But the moon is big enough to have plenty of gravity of its own. In fact, the moon has enough gravity to affect the Earth. Tides. The gravity of the moon pulls on all sorts of stuff on the Earth. Stuff that's closer to the moon gets pulled harder. Stuff that's further away gets pulled less hard. The water on Earth can move easily by this pull, and that's where we witness the effects of tidal forces. The water closest to the moon gets pulled toward it, making a bulge and the water on the sides gets pulled over toward the moon. And this water over here, on the far side from the moon, isn't close enough to the moon to be as affected as all the rest of the water, so it just stays where it is, thank you. This gives us two tidal bulges, one on the side of the Earth closest to the moon, and one on the opposite side. The sun has a similar but smaller effect on the oceans and tides. When the sun and moon get together to pull at the oceans, oh, <laughs> whoa, look out! <laughs> By the way, when the sun, moon, and earth are all in line, it's called syzygy, and eclipses sometimes happen. Whenever the earth, moon, and sun are all lined up, if things work out just right, the earth and moon can cast shadows on each other. These events are eclipses. If the earth casts a shadow on the moon, that's a lunar eclipse. If the moon casts a shadow on the earth, that's a solar eclipse. 